Recording is on. So just for the folks tuning in, uh, Jesse and I are talking about some updates to the Plenty site. So Jesse, I believe you were working on potentially thinking about when someone's uploading an image, how you might be able to leverage different libraries to crop scale or maybe manipulate those images from formats like PNGs to something like WebP, which is a little more performant for being loaded on the website. So I think you were thinking through some of that. Um, it doesn't sound like you know we're all the way there yet, but maybe you started implementing some ideas that you want to take a look at, and then we can go through questions um, on that. And then once after we do that, then I have just a couple small updates since the last video that, that I can go through on my end, so we can do that. Right. Yeah, whenever you're ready, if you want to share your screen, we can take a look. And um, Yeah, uh, be ready now, so I'll share my screen. Um, <laughs> There is some background noise, but don't sure. worry about it. Oh, My yeah. little brother is visiting. Oh, There's nice. Some... <laughs> Can you see it? Uh, once It looks like it's trying. If I give it one second. It, it might be a slow connection correctly, but... Uh-huh. I see I'm your face. With wi -Fi. Frozen right. Yeah. For some reason, it's like... It's frozen on just showing like your it was your face and now it's just like the initials for your name like the the default i'm not seeing the screen for some reason okay so i probably showed you the wrong thing shared the wrong thing um oh yeah true is it now showing no i don't know if it's uh that bug it's that the bug you, again. Yeah. you have to sign out sign in again i guess yeah. recording is on Hello again. Hey. <laughs> Can you see the VS Code now? Um, give it one second. It, sometimes it loads a little slow. It's like frozen on your face again. Ah, oh, no, it's not for some reason. It's it's doing the same thing. Huh. I was. Do you do you have I an external was... monitor plugged in or anything? No, now? it's only this monitor. Huh. Uh, so it's probably not loading to my screen. Yeah. Something. What's going on there? Hmm. It's probably the bad connection. Okay. All right. Well, I will explain it. It wasn't very much. Yeah. Yeah. We oh. let's walk through it. Yeah. Uh, I created the one configuration option. Mm -hmm. for a plenty conf configuration file. So okay. in the CMS, I added image sizes option. Okay. There's an object that uh, has names for image types and their value is an array of different sizes that has arrays of like width and height. Okay. So the idea was that you could select when uploading an image which size, which type of image it is. It is so if it's a logo or a banner or something like that, yeah. you could optimize it like to the correct size and require you to uh, crop it to proper size, mm -hmm. proper aspect ratio. And so the idea there being the developer would specify these different image sizes. So they, they know maybe there's five image sizes that are being used on the yeah. site, right? And they would specify that. And then a user would be able to select, okay, I'm choosing one of these predefined options that yeah. the developer is using. Yeah, that makes that seems to make sense. Yeah. yeah. And it could have like multiple sizes per image type. So that it generates all of them mm -hmm. for optimizing the bandwidth use. Yep. So for mobile devices it would load smaller images and for desktop load larger images. Yep. That, that makes sense. Or image so set. Yeah, like kind of responsive image style, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. So for people who aren't familiar, like um obviously some images are, are larger size and like on on mobile if you scale that down you're still loading the, the pixel density of something bigger so it's slow. So that so making it more performance. Yeah that makes sense. Of course this all has to be optional. So yeah. You can use it if you want to use it, but yeah, there should be also option for maximum image size. Yep, like scales too. Yeah. So, so the way this would work, this would be basically making copies, right? So you'd you'd upload yeah. your original and whatever for it, and then it would be like, okay, stamp out all these copies in these different styles, and then you could use those. Yeah, that's cool. Is there a possibility of a way to um to okay? So I'm thinking in the case of replacing images, right? So say we have a page set up and it has 
um, an intro with a 500 by 350 pixel like image in the upper right. Yep. And then when I'm going to replace it, is there a way to be like, hey, I know this previous image was this and like I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you to, if you want to apply that style for that new image to that before putting it in that position? Yeah. Uh, do you mean like binding it to the field, the image style, basically? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So the... Yeah. Well, and like, and by discovering like the actual, like with, so yeah. let's assume again, I think, you know, there's a lot of different ways we can come at it. I think when I'm thinking of plenty and the way that we've been doing it so far, and, and this is to be determined how it all fleshes out, but like it starts with some kind of sane defaults. And then it, we, we want to eventually allow a developer to, to add specifications on top of that to make it specific. Yeah. Right. But it should kind of, if, if we can get the kind of work without the developer having to do anything, I think that's always a win. Right. So I'm wondering, and I don't know anything about implementing this, but I'm trying to think, okay, there's an image field on on a page right and then when you know you'll, you'll go to that page and you'd see like some kind of thumbnail of what the image is currently and then you'd have like an option to like to change it and when you change it i'm wondering if this library could be like hey that previous image just by like measuring it would be like that previous image was 500 by 350. do you yeah. want to make your new image 500 by 350 so it just slots into that space i don't know i mean that i don't know if that's possible um but it could be possible yeah but, or is, is it, it is possible yeah. With with JavaScript and in the client side, it's totally possible. Yeah. So the, only only like restriction I can see is how much work it is. To do. Sure. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And, and for now, I think you know, getting something working in the the, the short term is better than yeah. you know delaying it indefinitely till we get yeah. the, the perfect thing working. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I like to just brainstorm that stuff out. But it's totally like the, it's a totally better way for this project because there's the, the idea of discoverable CMS that you have thrown out. Yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> so it's like, and that's kind of what I'm thinking from from like the default, like the, the starting thing, right? It's like you sh hopefully, you know, you could have built a site without the CMS in mind mm -hmm. at all, and then you could yeah. just go to it and start editing it, and it would work in some kind of functional way. And that's kind of the idea behind yeah. discoverability. Um, but but you're right. I think eventually, you know, you need those other options because there needs to be mm. ways to do all sorts of things that the developer can say, this is required. This has this options. This starts with this defined list or like those things have to happen um, just yeah. to have a, a fully professional um, site. But like, I, yeah, I, I was always focusing on the discoverability and um, we'll see how hard it is to add all that, all those overrides yeah. in afterwards. That might be complicated, but I think we'll get there. Um, yeah. um, I guess if we are doing that it's not that way then we have to do the image field first yeah exactly and that's not ready yet right so yeah. i think i could work on that um there's a couple of things i want to i need to work on um i think getting the image field working would be good um i can do that and then um here let me share my screen i, I think there's just a couple of things i want to this will be pretty short i think um, can you see yeah i can see okay um, so, uh, so I think, you know, adding the image field would be good. Another thing I want to do is, um, so I have this media and this was on the last uh, video that I did with Stephanie and Jesse. So if we come in here and we like click on these, these images here and then we delete them. Um, now I actually haven't pulled from the remote in a while, so this might throw some errors, but, uh, let's, uh, I'll grab this first one here. Um, if I delete this, not only does it do a commit to the back end, um, but it also actually deletes it from the display. So. Um, let's see, what, what image is this? It's, that's gonna be hard to tell. Maybe I'll grab this one so it's easier to tell, right? Yeah. So there's only one of this plenty logo, right? So I, if I delete this, um, yeah, I think I probably have errors because I've probably already done this and this image might not exist anymore. Um, uh, what, 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 all right, so that's a bad example. Anyway, this should delete it from the actual display as well. So it does a commit in the background and, and then it deletes it from the display and then you can actually like, you know, click out of your components and add them back and, and it's removed from the display. So I would like to have that same kind of experience happen on the front end when you're uploading images. So if we come here and we upload a file, I would love if it was, you know, already being added to the local prop. So it appears in the libraries, just so you get that full, like app like experience, even though in the back end things are kind of processing more slowly um, behind yeah. the scenes. So that's something that I'll have to take a look at as well. I think um, getting the, the images to um, appear here, doing that kind of like regex, like, uh, functionality here. So if we have a, a page with an image, you see a little thumbnail and you have the ability to remove, um, uh, sorry, not the ability to remove, the ability to change. So I think the idea of this discoverable CMS, if we have like um, a field like uh, that looks something like assets, 
you know, whatever dot web P something like that. We'll recognize this as an image. So we'll load it on the front end um, as, as like a, a display and we'll have an ability to change. But if you add the ability to remove, you're going to remove the idea of being able to discover that as an image field and it'll become a text field again, right? So I think for, for the beginning, I just want this to be a change field. So uh, a thumbnail with a change field and that'll allow you to ideally be able to upload an image with the same width and height specifications as what's there. That, that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the discoverable end of things. Um, so we'll see if we get there. Um, but that'd be kind of cool to, to take a look at if you think it's possible without going too crazy. Um, a couple of other small updates is just, uh, you know, make it so this now has like a, a slide transition before this was just kind oh. of appearing. So um, I think the slide transition is a little rough because I'm right now I'm doing it on the width, um, which, you know, if, if this thing scales down, it kind of squishes things. It, it's fast enough where you probably don't even see it. and It doesn't really matter that much. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but eventually I probably do this um, on a different parameter to actually make it appear off the screen. Yeah, like and, transform or something. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, other things, I'm going through and adding some different WYSIWYG type things. So. Um, this is this. I was trying to do this the right way. So basically, there is this um, document uh, exec command. I don't know if you've used this at all, Jesse. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't heard it. Yeah, so it's deprecated. Um, yeah. But but there's not. And I was reading this on um, like a Stack Overflow post. Uh, there's not a lot of th this command is is awesome. By the way, it like allows you to do lots of WYSIWYG things in meaningful ways without having to think about it like this is just like a one liner basically and i had previously um here, let me see if i can do this let's see if i can find it okay so this this stack overflow post right here right so it's talking about this being obsolete so what's the alternative um the highest ranked answer is like you know using these uh, javascript functions so like you know, uh, create creating a range, getting selection, surrounding content, oh. all that. And it's, it's super manual, and it's a really pain to work with. I spent like a lot yeah. of time trying to get this to work in a meaningful way, and there's always bugs. Like, think in terms of things like you know, you'd bold this, for instance, right, and then maybe you would try to italicize this, and there's an intersection behind um, the scene with the actual HTML. But with with this uh, exact command, it thinks about all that stuff for you, and it's super easy to like go and then you know remove styling or. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, do all so so exec command is really easy even if it's deprecated and it seems like all the browsers still support it yeah um and this answer here talks about like you know year 2022 answer that has some upvotes is uh it's obsolete but there's not really a great alternative so like for now most people are just continuing to use this until they have a meaningful way um to replace it um and just so if you're not aware that some of the challenges behind this is like this by default um bold is actually coming across as B tags instead of strong tags, which is not really semantic HTML. So if you come here, it's, it's putting these in B tags. So it has some issues like that, but I feel like I don't understand why they can't just update the API to take maybe some more parameters to make allow you to pass in certain elements that you want it to be wrapped with. Anyways, I digress. Um, for now, this is what we're going to use because it's the easiest thing, but it should allow you to do lots of things like add new paragraphs. Um, uh, you can uh, you can create links. Uh, right now, this is a little rough how I've implemented this. So I just have a, a prompt coming up here. So you could do like press.com. Um, and then you could say if you want to open a new tab and no, and then that appears right on your page. That should work. Uh, you could come here. You could unlink this if you wanted to. Um, and then you can also do like uh, bullets. So, you know. Are those like actually different paragraphs? Yeah, so you can see that okay. HTML on the back end, it's, it's trying to like figure out exactly what's happening here. And it puts, uh, it will put things in like unordered lists. So it puts on or list with list items. Um, the, the, they wrap things in divs and add breaks for like line breaks like that. Okay. Um, so okay. yeah, the HTML is a little wonky, but it, it gets, for now, it allows people to potentially just edit their site. I don't know. At some point, maybe loading a, a more full fledged uh, WYSIWYG. If you're using you content editable. Yeah, yeah exactly. Are. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You should uh, add one paragraph there for the starting, like starting value, starting element. So it uh -huh. will repeat that paragraph for all the paragraphs instead yeah, of so, so just kind of like wrap it in a p tag on the back end. You're thinking something like that. Uh, like if it's an empty, empty te text editor, then yeah. it should be a paragraph or a okay. team with paragraph or something like that. Yeah. And make that. I don't know if it should be D 
Active Content Editable and then Empty Paragraph there. Mm -hmm. So it edits the paragraph and then when you press enter it, it creates new paragraph. New paragraphs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. I think there's, a, there's probably a lot of improvements that can be made here in general. Yeah. Um, but you know, for now, this was something kind of quick to, yeah. to get things kind of working in general. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, and again, you, you know, you have to, on the front end, you have to make sure you're accounting for this to, to actually render the HTML out. Right. Like, um, for instance, if the, you're in a field that doesn't do that, like this first field, I don't think it does it. So if we pasted this in here, right. So this became a WYSIWYG field. If we were, Oh, um, uh, wait, let me see here. If I were to do something like, okay. Right. If you were to make that list item, you know, we're not, we're not rendering the HTML. So you have to account for that on your front end and there's some disconnect, right? Like on your, on your layout, you might not be rendering it out, but we don't know that when we're reading your content source, we might still give you a WYSIWYG. So those things are a little bit wonky, but again, um, I think there are probably bigger fish to fry in the project than getting this perfect. Yeah. I just wanted to and, the, and text editors have been like done a lot of time. So yeah, maybe using some pre-made text editor could be useful. Exactly. Yeah. So I was trying to do it. Yeah. I was trying to do it in the, like the most lightweight way as possible yeah. for now, but yeah, I think, um, at some point we might want to just add something that's a little more fleshed out for this kind of thing. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where things are at there. Um, I think there's, you know, there's, I'm trying to think of priorities. Like, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to make improvements there. I'd love to, to, to do some of the media stuff that we're talking about. I think it'd, it'd be great if you have time to, to continue running with the stuff that you're working on there. I might turn my attention over to page adding just because this is becoming like the, the probably the, the most high priority, like gap that we still have of like, yeah. How's that going to work? I think we're gonna to have to, you know, we're gonna to have to gather up the different content um, types that are in the system, and then we're gonna to have to um, pull in those blueprints some way that can be used meaningfully, and then allow that to be made into new pages. So I think that's probably my next priority. Although I might try to do some minor things with the media to get the things to be added to the library from uploading before I do that. But um, yeah, that's probably the next big thing that needs to be done. Yep. I would say. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, do you have any thoughts or any questions on any of this? Can uh, we wrap up or? You should uh, stop the screen share. Okay. So. All right. Cool. Yeah. Wait a second.